Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at another awesome homebrew. And this one is called the PSPX or IPSPX. And it is a Mac OS interface for the PSP. And I'm running off adrenaline on my PS Vita and it's working just fine. There are a few features that are not working unfortunately, like uh, I've seen someone use it in another video where uh, they were able to change the wallpaper, but it was a very old uh, video. It was probably two, three years ago. And I just stumbled across this off Google and I'm like, hey, is there a Mac OS interface for the PS Vita? And there really isn't. But there is one for the PSP, so this is as close as we're going to get here for anything like this. So it's very interesting, and this will work for the PSP, and I will cover this in another video because I know a lot of you will say, Hey, Robles Jr., can you cover this for the PSP Go or PSP 3000, 2000, whatever. So we will be double dipping these videos here pretty soon, and I do apologize for that, but I do get a lot of questions saying, Hey, can you cover this for the regular PSP which I will do later on so here we are this is the desktop and I'm using my left analog to move the uh, mouse pointer or the cursor here around and you have to press square in order for you to open some of these uh, different options now I open up dashboard and I don't get anything and it says no disponible in IPSP X Alpha 1.00. Contacte el desarrollador para actualizar su sistema IPSP X. So this is all in Spanish, which is very interesting. Uh, my Spanish is kind of bad, but I'm still working on it. Uh, aplicaciones, let's see, PSP Tunes, PSP Update. Now none of this works. So we have the IPSP Update. We have the photo and it's just not connecting and I think it's supposed to connect to whatever's on your PSP like your photos and things like that let's check the Apple icon up here and you can see we can go through some of the menu options which is nice so we'll cover all the different features with this homebrew later on in this video and I'll be showing you now how to install this on your PS Vita let's open up our Vita shell get this started and you can either connect through USB connection or FTP client let's press start and begin our FTP connection so select button under FTP perfect let's press select and now we'll head on over to our desktop and open up our FTP client. There we go. Let's quick connect. Perfect. And now we will open up our UXO folder, go to the PSP EMU folder, and we will open up the PSP folder and game. This is where we're going to throw in that IPSPX folder which we're going to download here next and in the description you'll see a link to this here the Google Drive and we want to download the Mac OS IPSPX.RAR or RAR hit this download link on the top hit download will take you to a new tab and it should download right away perfect let's show in our folder and you will need some type of extracting program and I'll have a link to 7-zip which works just great let's right click and usually you should see an extract all with a zipped folder but we're not seeing it here and that's why you'll need the 7-zip program installed that way you can extract the files for this RAR file <laughs> files 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 and what we're gonna do is go to 7-zip here and extract files let's hit OK and perfect now we have this folder let's open up that folder and now we have the IPSPX let's double click and see what's inside so yeah everything looks good let's go back and now we can copy this over to our PSP game folder just like that and since I already have it, I'm not going to copy that, so we're just going to skip that here. 
Okay, now for the USB connection. Let's go back to our Vita. Let's hit cancel, let's press start and enable USB. Let's hit select. Now we'll go back to our desktop here. And you want to find the PSP EMU folder and a lot of people have problems with this so what you want to do is go to your view tab on the top here and we want to go to options and under options you go to view and we want to uncheck this here hide protected operating system files recommended if I check this that folder will disappear you can see it's no longer there so I'll do that one more time, go to options, go to view, and uncheck hide protected operating system files recommended. Hit yes, apply, okay, and there it is, PSP EMU folder. You don't know how many times people are saying, hey, how can I access those folders through USB connection? I get so many comments, so many questions on this, and I just want to be very clear in all my videos moving forward that way I don't get the same comment in that specific video and that's why I'm doing this for you I'll open up our PSP folder there's our game perfect where is our downloads there it is and we'll copy this folder the I PSP X folder into that game folder just like that whoops it didn't go into the uh, game folder. It has to go into game folder. So let's get these files. And I'm just going to delete that because it shouldn't be there. And now we'll go back on our Vita and check out all the different features with this homebrew. So let's go. All right, let's open up Adrenaline and run that application. It's pretty cool to have as part of your collection and I think it's great to have something like this available and they haven't really tapped into updating it or whatever or adding any new features to it and this is a very interesting homebrew that was just abandoned and a lot of potential there very cool interface so let's check it out here and like I said before, some of the features are just not working. I was going through this for about an hour and a half trying to figure out why some of these aren't working and I just could not figure it out. And we just missed the boot. I'm gonna have to uh, restart that, sorry. Let me restart that so you can hear the nice Apple boot. And this right here, what you're seeing, is a custom theme for the PSP which is called iFlow and it's basically a, a custom theme to the Mac OS which is so cool and this is not the application we're talking about here guys this is a whole different whole different thing here and here is the IPSP perfect and that's also part of the custom theme that Apple that is not part of the application we're opening up here. Nice. There it is. And I don't have my audio cable connected just because I have a lot of issues with that and there's a lot of static that goes through that. So it's just annoying. And I like how it opens up. It kind of fades in there a little bit. Nice desktop wallpaper. The typical Apple's wallpaper and <clears throat> at the top we have the time which should be 11 03 p.m. 7 July 7 2020 our battery percentage we're connected through USB right now and our finder in order for you to select some of these options down below on your dock you will have to press the square button and pressing the square button here just doesn't do anything it just keeps repeating this message let's go back and I'm using the left analog to move the cursor or the mouse pointer let's check out the Apple icon at the top 
and here it says acerca de este Mac let's press square and this is showing you that this is the IPSP X Alpha 1.00 and this is all in Spanish very interesting PSP slim and light espacio in memory stick this is incorrect this is not what's on my memory card so that's that's all wrong let's close that and let's check out the second yeah, you really gotta get on that you can also use your d-pad and it says actualization de software and I believe this is to get something opened up which we can't this is your preferences preferencias del sistema so here we have four different options and this is all in Spanish too we have fondo de escritorio Salva pantallas, usarios, and trackpad. Interesting. So these are our wallpapers, but when I hit square, nothing happens to any of these options. And I did press all the other buttons, like circle, X, triangle, left, right trigger, D pad doesn't do much except for move the cursor around. And so our only option to select and open things up is the square button and still nothing. And I did see, like I said earlier, uh, a video, old video that the guy was using and he opened up the uh, option here and he had several different wallpapers you could use for this application. But I think he was using it on the desktop. He was using it on the desktop version of the PSP, the actual PSP, not PS Vita or anything like that. So this might not be working for us here on the Vita. So let's close that out and open up another option here. So we have our dock and we get the same message there. And at the bottom, we just have restart application and turn off close session, cerrar sesión, I think that's how you hit. Let's take a look at the applications available and we have several emulators. We have the Diatlas X64, the SNES emulator, the Pico Drive, and the Game Boy Advance emulator. Along with ESMUPI, which I'm not very familiar with, we have Bootcamp, PS Paint, and IPSP Safari. So let's see if we can open up the Game Boy Advance emulator and see what happens. I haven't tested this out. I wanted to do this here live with you to see what happens. And I'm not getting any responses. It was just interesting to see that some of these really cool homebrew developments just haven't gone any further from the first stage. Yeah, I'm selecting these, I'm double tapping, I'm not getting anything to open up here. And perhaps I gotta mess with the files within the IPSP folder and I don't know, throw in the emulators in there and see if it works. So I will do a little bit more testing and maybe you guys could help me out too in, in discovering different things we could do with this homebrew to make it better. And I'm just not getting nothing. I'm not getting no responses oh we got something I'm just, I was just sm smashing buttons there and the game could not be started so that did close it did happen to me before when I was trying PS paint for the first time So let's open that back up next to applications we have the preferences system preferences 
preferences del sistema. Let's open that up and the same options that we had before. And that is basically it, guys. So, for the most part, this thing is pretty useless. <laughs> Uh, just because you can't really do much with it so that's very uh, very disappointing but I really wanted to cover this because I think it's just so cool to have a part of your collection and also just to show it off and, and things like that I, I think it's just so interesting to see some of this homebrew that was created and never finished or just abandoned and they just pulled the plug and they're like you know what I'm done messing with that I got a family to feed or I'm going to this whatever I'm doing this thing in my life and these developers just kind of stop doing this stuff so I would love to see this uh, move forward and hopefully me making this video will inspire that developer or someone else to take over and finish this work which is very awesome so that is it for this one guys thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it if you have any questions comment down below and if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up it really helps me out a lot and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video in the future thank you so much for watching take care and i'll see you on the next one